Hey, what's going on everybody? Gareth here, FCP Euro, and today we're going to be doing a DSG service on our 2017 Mark 7 GTI. Of course, this vehicle has been featured in the long haul video series. I've had a lot of good and bad experiences with this car this year. One potentially negative experience we're looking to avoid here is potential issues with the DSG transmission. Of course, the factory recommended service interval is 40,000 miles to basically avoid fluid contamination. However, this has seen a couple of track days. Uh, it's been driven pretty aggressively. So we're gonna do this preventively in a much shorter interval than we normally see, but we're gonna take you along for the ride and we're gonna show you how to do a DSG service. So let's get started. Now, if you're doing this at home, can't stress enough, if you have to lift the vehicle, which in this case you really do, and you wanna make sure it's level in order to do the proper fill procedure, make sure the vehicle is properly supported. Of course, here in the studio we have a lift, but have done this on the ground before, it is totally possible. Uh, first thing we're gonna have to do is, unfortunately the battery does need to come out. At least in this case, we're gonna start removing the uh, battery diaper. That's really the only thing that I can call this. All right, we're gonna take our uh, 10 millimeter socket. We're gonna remove these battery terminals. Those out of the way, we can slip this battery cover out of the way. Now, on some of the older vehicles, this will be a plastic uh, housing instead. All right, next step, we need to remove the bolt that is holding down the uh, battery tie down. That's gonna be a 13 millimeter. All right, now we're gonna remove the battery. Uh, this battery doesn't have a handle on it, so just be careful when you're removing it. Don't tilt it too much. All right, so depending on the vehicle, you may or may not have to remove the air filter housing. In this case, we have to, only because the air filter housing sits on top of the battery tray. So we're gonna move this next. So remove the um, air filter housing, which in this case is an aftermarket 034 unit. Uh, we're gonna disconnect the little vent hose there. Next, we have a seven millimeter socket to loosen up this clamp. You have this uh, air intake box here that connects to the air filter housing. I have to remove this in order to pull this entire housing out of the way. It's held in with two T25 uh, torque screws, which are located on the front of this cowl. Once you remove those, you should be able to pull this out of the way. You have these little grommets right here. You have to pull the housing up and out. Like so, you have a little vent or a drain for the air filter housing, and then you have this vacuum line right here that you can now easily remove. Put this off to the side. All right, pro tip, since we've removed the air filter housing and basically the inlet of the turbo is completely exposed, we're just gonna take some blue painter's tape, tape it off, and that's just gonna make sure that if we drop anything while we're working in here, it doesn't end up in a place that uh, we can't access it, and the last place you want it to go is into the turbos. There we go, so we don't have to worry about that now. So next step, we're gonna move the battery tray, which is gonna give us access to the uh, oil filter housing on top of the transmission. Um, looks like we have three 10 millimeter uh, bolts holding these in. Looks like you can also use a T25 if you wish, but uh, I'm gonna use a 10 mil. And then let's see if we get this one in the back. We can. All right, looks like we have a little clip that's holding our positive battery lead in place. Just slips into there, so we'll make note of that so when we put this thing back together, uh, we don't forget that. And it looks like they were being sneaky and they hit a fourth fastener down there. So to get to this guy, we're gonna use a wobble extension and a 10 mil socket, shallow. Should be able to give us the angle that we need. And it does. All right, we're gonna slide the battery tray out of the way. Now, still have this electrical connector here connected, but that's okay because we're just gonna let it sit like this. We're not gonna completely remove it from the vehicle. And now we have access to the top of our oil filter housing. All right, so we have the uh, filter housing exposed. Um, you can see the cap right there. We're gonna take a 24 millimeter socket. I'm using a uh, oil filter uh, cap socket, which is the low profile 24 mil. I'm gonna go ahead and spin that off and we'll be able to replace the filter. There's gonna be some fluid in the housing. So as you're removing it, it may not be a bad idea to have some rags around. Want to be careful removing this. So 
The spillage is minimal. We already see we're seeping a smidge. There we go. Now we got a little bit of fluid just seeping out, but not a big deal. We'll clean that up. So now that we've removed the um, oil filter cap, we're gonna go ahead and remove the filter. There is some oil in that housing still and the filter's displacing some of it. So just have a rag handy. I'm gonna go put this someplace safe where it's not gonna leak everywhere. We're gonna go ahead and install the new filter. Now you'll notice that this is a little bit different design. This is an older version of the same filter. I don't think there's really much of a difference to discuss on that. It's gonna go ahead and just click into place. We're going to go ahead and replace the oil filter cap o-ring. Just going to roll it off. It's a round o-ring, so there's no like orientation you need to worry about to slide into place. We got a new one which comes with the filter kit. I also recommend using some gear oil and lubricating this o-ring, which will just help install make sure it doesn't bind or get caught as it's threading into place. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the filter housing cap. We're gonna go ahead and tighten it down until it bottoms out. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit it with the torque wrench just to make sure. The torque spec on this is 25 Newton meters. We're gonna go ahead and take some brake parts cleaner. We're gonna go ahead and spray off any excess gear oil that has leaked out. Beautiful. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall everything back into uh, the driver's side of the engine bay. So we're basically done the engine bay at this point. So we're just gonna go ahead and put it back together. Bingo. Before reinstalling the air filter housing, uh, just make sure your positive battery positive cable is not tucked down under there. Let's reconnect this breather line real quick. And then also that vacuum line that we've disconnected, we want to make sure that that's been plugged back in. We're going to go ahead and tighten down the clamp that uh, holds the intake tube to, in this case, the adapter for the turbo inlet. It's a seven mil. Now we're going to be installing the final piece of the air intake. It's basically just a suction cowl for the air box, almost like a cold air intake. Space is somewhat limited here, but uh, through some slick maneuvering, should be able to get this to line back up. Just make sure you don't pinch this hose. There we go. Fortunately, the plastic here is pliable enough that you can get it to move around and uh, slip into place. Remember to reinstall that T25 screw to make sure that this is secured in place. And make sure that portion of the upper radiator hose snaps back into place. And now we'll reinstall the battery. Just make sure you don't pinch any of the leads we're going to put it into its approximate position. Of course, when we dropped the uh, bracket down there to lock it in place, it'll sort of self-center itself. I should be able to put it in. There we go. So now we're going to go ahead and install the 13 millimeter bolt uh, that holds the battery tie down in place. Just using a magnetic tool to guide it in there since space is somewhat limited. And we're just going to use an extension to reach in there. Don't have to go too crazy tight with this. You just want to snug it up and we're there. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our battery cover, AKA the battery diaper. Flap goes on this side. Fantastic. 
We're gonna put our ground back on first. And we're gonna put our positive battery cable back on second. Car's alive. And we're gonna go ahead and take a 10 mil socket and tighten down these battery clamps. And go ahead and slip the cover over. Now, every uh, part from here we're gonna be doing underneath the car. We're gonna raise the vehicle up. We're gonna drain the transmission. We're gonna go ahead and refill it, and then we'll go from there. All right, so the next step, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take the old track splash shield that we have in this vehicle. Uh, you did see that get installed in a previous video. Uh, normally, your Mark 7 is not gonna have this tray. You can go straight for the drain plug on the transmission. But on this GTI, since we have the all track skid, plan, uh, skid pan, we're gonna have to go ahead and remove it, which is a bunch of T25 and 13 millimeter fasteners. All right, so the next step, we're gonna go ahead and drain the transmission. You have a uh, 14 millimeter um, hex bolt right here, drain plug rather. Um, not much is gonna come out after you remove this, and I'll show you why as soon as I get it out. You will get some fluid that comes out most likely, but you're not gonna get a ton. So next step, some more fluid actually came out than I thought there would. Uh, there's something in there called a spillover tube. You're gonna take an eight millimeter hex key and you're gonna unthread the spill tube. And the spill tube is basically the level indicator for the transmission. Uh, best way to think about this, this transmission is actually on its side. Your oil pan is right there and your drain and fill is here. Typically on most vehicles, uh, you would see this fill plug located on the side of the transmission. And here comes the rest of the fluid. And this is your spillover tube. So that sits up inside the transmission and your level that you wanna be at is just over this. Some fluid will of course spill over and there's a collection area in here. Um, but uh, really the ideal level is to be just over the top of this. Uh, fluid was also pretty clean, but this vehicle also has less than 20,000 miles on it. But the reason, like I said, we're doing this earlier is this vehicle has been driven pretty hard this year. Uh, the number one problem in these transmissions is fluid contamination, basically wear material in the fluid, which, um, you know, if you let it go for long enough, all that wear material will build up around the hall effect sensors, which are inside the transmission. And once you have enough metal debris that's built up around those hall effect sensors, uh, basically the brain of the transmission doesn't know what to do because it doesn't know where anything is in relation to each other. Uh, there's about 16 hall effect sensors in this transmission. So the worst thing you can ever do on one of these is extend the fluid service interval unnecessarily. Now that most of this fluid is drained out, we're gonna reinstall the spillover tube. Uh, number one thing on these is do not tighten these too much. There's no reason to go crazy on these. If you were to break this off inside the transmission, you're gonna be very sad. Uh, basically, we're just gonna thread it back in. I mean, literally once it threads in, we're gonna give it the two finger torque spec. That's it. Don't go any tighter, there's no need to. Once it bottoms out, you're done. Next step, and this, there's a lot of controversy on this. Now, of course, you could refill the transmission from the top through the filter housing. Speaking from personal experience, we had to do this once this season uh, with one of the TCRs. It took two hours to get five and a half liters of fluid in the transmission unnecessary. You could do a gravity fill uh, with the proper tool or you could do a force fill underneath. We're going to do a force fill since we have the tools. Uh, this is CTA 7416. That's a special adapter uh, for the O2E transmission. It's going to thread to the bottom where the fill and drain plug goes. Now at this point if you have like a bottle pump you can use a bottle pump but uh, we ain't got time for that. Uh, so we're going to use the CTA power filler uh, basically, we're just going to create a vacuum. It's going to push the fluid up inside the transmission. We're going to let it do its thing. We're going to go have a coffee break while it's doing that, and then we're going to come back and we're going to go through the rest of the procedure. 
that's how easy this thing makes it. Now, the nice thing about this is it has a compression fitting in it. So just slip it up over. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it. We're gonna put it in the off position, obviously. We need to build some vacuum pressure first. Yeah. Just gonna go ahead and start pouring, uh, we're gonna do five liters of this Luka Mali 8100 uh, dual clutch transmission oil. Now this gear oil meets the Volkswagen spec. It also meets BMW spec and a whole slew of other vehicle manufacturers as well. Now, generally speaking, they say uh, the fill on this is five and a half liters. However, it's in my experience that you usually only get about four and a half back into these transmissions. All right, so we've loaded our power filler up here with five liters of gear oil. Um, the fill on the transmission is five and a half liters, but you're not gonna empty five and a half liters. You're really only gonna get maybe four, four and a half out. You can go ahead and overfill the transmission because when you go through the warm-up procedure and get the gear oil up to temp, it's gonna expand and any excess is gonna come out anyway. Um, so don't be afraid to overfill the transmission initially it's not gonna make a difference. So we're gonna go ahead and build some pressure on this bad boy. We can get that pressure gauge to about halfway where it needs to be. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up the valve. And it's gonna force the fluid up into the transmission and we can go ahead and get that commercial brake. You can see that we have fluid slowly coming back out after that fill. We've gone ahead and actually put just about five liters in the transmission. We're gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect this entire fitting and we're gonna put the drain plug, the actual drain plug back on with the new crush washer. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and lower the car down. We're gonna start up and we're gonna show you how to measure the uh, transmission temperature and everything else and how to make sure to get this thing at the proper fill level. Quite a bit of fluid is gonna come out. So that's fine, that's what we expect. Like I said, initially it's okay to overfill the transmission, any excess is gonna flow out, but we're gonna warm up the transmission with it slightly overfilled, and then when it's up to operating temperature, we'll go ahead and let it do its final drain, so to speak. Of course, this is messy, so you will 100% wanna be wearing gloves, this stuff stinks. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten the drain plug on. Not too tight, we're gonna be taking it off again anyway. Uh, this is uh, just gonna be so we can get the transmission up to temperature. Right now this thing is dead cold, so it's gonna take a minute to get up to temp. All right, now we're uh, gonna go ahead and do the uh, fluid level check procedure. Uh, basically, on this transmission, um, the minimum temperature the transmission could be at is 35 degrees Celsius. The absolute maximum is 45 degrees Celsius. If, is if, the, if the transmission is past 45, you have to wait for it to cool down. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it up. We're gonna have the Autel MaxiCheck MX808 plugged in. Uh, we're gonna be looking at the gear oil temperature of the transmission. We're gonna shift it from park, reverse, neutral, drive, run it through the manual gears. Uh, basically let the oil pump pick up the new fluid distribute it through the uh, system. And then once we get up to 35 degrees Celsius, we're gonna turn the car off. We're gonna put it back up in the air. We'll take the fill plug off or fill and drain plug. The excess is gonna run out. We're gonna put the new crush washer back on and then we're gonna call it a wrap. It's basically the general procedure, at least on this transmission. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. We're gonna go ahead and run the transmission through its gears. So we're gonna go ahead and park, reverse, neutral, drive, and then we're gonna run it through its manual gears. Now, of course, uh, this entire time, we're gonna leave our foot on the brake. We're not actually gonna let it spin or anything. And we're pausing at each step. And the whole purpose of that procedure is to allow uh, the pump to fill up all the solenoids inside the mechatronic unit. And now we just play the waiting game. We're basically just waiting for the transmission to come up to temperature. Uh, optimal fill is going to be uh, 35 degrees Celsius, but you have up until um, 45 degrees Celsius. Uh, anywhere past that, you have to wait for the transmission to cool back down. All right, so right here we have our transmission fluid temperature. Remember I said 35 degrees Celsius is the beginning fill level. You have up until 45 Celsius now as the uh, engine runs and um, the transmission fluid temperature increases. We're just monitoring that temperature. Uh, now, of course, the transmission was pretty cold when we started. Um, so, you know, just to get some heat into it, we can go ahead and just give it some RPMs. This will um, 
heat up the oil a little bit faster. You do have a decent window there, so even if you go over 35, that's perfectly fine. But you want to be between 35 and 45 when you do this final level check. Now, of course, if you have a VCDS or Irwin or any other factory level tool, this will do the same thing. And of course, you can also get this information with a with a somewhat decent entry level scanner, not just a strict OBD2 scanner. We need to read uh, other control module information. Um, but uh, you don't need something as fancy as this MX-808 to do this. You can have a slightly more basic tool as well. All right, so we're at a 35 degrees Celsius. I'm just gonna give it a couple of more degrees. I'll let it get to like 37, only because I gotta turn the car off and throw it back up in the air. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of wiggle room there. But that's all you're really looking for. Once you get to 35, uh, that's gonna be your final fill level really. All right, we've gotten to 37 Celsius. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the car off. And we're gonna raise it back up in the air and we're gonna take the fill slash drain plug out. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and take our 14 millimeter Allen socket and we're gonna go ahead and remove the drain fill plug once again. Uh, we are gonna have some fluid come out for sure. If nothing comes out, we'll go ahead and put some more in, but I think a decent amount's gonna come out on us here. So that's all excess fluid that's coming out of the transmission now. So we're gonna go ahead and let that drain. As you can see, it's slowed down to a trickle here. Um, so we can go ahead and put the fill drain plug back on. We put a new aluminum crush washer on. Just gonna go ahead and uh, get this started by hand. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, torque the fill plug, drain plug back to 65 Newton meters. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the all-track splash shield. Just gonna get a couple bolts in here by hand first to support the weight of this thing. It does help if you have a friend. Unfortunately, my friend is behind the camera right now, so. And that's how you do a, a DSG service on an O2E uh, DSG transmission. Um, as you can see, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit involved in some aspects, particularly in getting to the filter on top of the transmission. But other than that, the filling procedure and basically the level check procedure, again, the transmission up to temperature, that's really not the difficult part. Uh, best thing to do if you're doing this at home, especially on jack stands, is make sure that the vehicle is as level as possible. Unfortunately, you can't really just do drive up ramps on this because the transmission won't be level. You really have to make sure the rear is up as well. Uh, but other than that, it's really a very simple procedure. Uh, fluid maintenance on the DSG is the biggest thing that you can do in terms of ensuring that it has a long service life. Like I said earlier, uh, fluid contamination is the biggest problems these transmissions have, especially since you know the vehicles come out of lease, they get sold off, that 40,000 mile interval is long surpassed, and then the contamination of the fluid causes the sensors to get clogged with wear material, and then of course it doesn't function properly. So as long as your service interval is every 40,000 miles, maybe decreasing the interval 30,000, 25,000 miles if it's a tuned vehicle, or if you drive it on the track, uh, you should be totally fine and not really have any issues with your DSG uh, as long as you follow that uh, fluid fill procedure. But other than that, hope you learned something. If you have any questions, uh, please let us know in the comment box below. Uh, all the products used in this video will be in the description as well. And we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching. One fucking take wonder. Do -do -do, do -do -do.